guys. This is gonna be my first experience behind the wheel of a KAT powered S chassis car. This is an S14 Nissan 240SX with an S15 Silvia steering wheel, very nice touch, and a KA24 engine under the hood, which of course was the less sought after USDM spec engine for the S chassis cars of this era. Now, what the owner of this car has done is effectively, you know, triple the horsepower of this engine by sticking a turbo on it. Now, you might think, Marcus, why wouldn't you just find an SR20 donor engine, stick that in here, pretty much bolts right in, and you're good to go. And I would have agreed with you up until about five minutes ago. Because here's the thing, the K824, the engine that was deemed right for this car for the North American market is of higher displacement than the two liter SR20 found in the Silvias over in the J Japanese markets and other markets, right? Wow, this thing's fast, straight up fast. Um, <laughs> so the difference is, the main difference is this engine, the K24 was never turbocharged from the factory, right? America got shafted in many, many ways in this era of Japanese and European cars, to be completely honest, okay? For example, the E36 M3 has a better engine from the European market. The Toyota MR2, the second generation MR2 has, the Japanese model has better camshafts, slightly different turbo. And then you have other cars like the Silvia and 240SX that were completely different. You know, the 240, never had a turbocharged engine in North America altogether, you know? So for a lot of these things, you actually have to either import, if you can, the vehicle you're looking for from Japan, or you go the slightly more rebel route, if you will. I think turbocharging a KA engine and sticking it in your 240 is definitely a rebel move. It's a little bit of an outlaw thing to do. You know, it's a little bit more of an aggressive build. It takes a little bit more time and to get it right. So we're gonna talk about the disadvantages and the advantages of doing a KAT. So my name is Tomas Adriano and this is my 1997 240SX. Uh, so it started off as a bone stock 1997 240SX automatic. Uh, a year later, I decided to uh, turbo the car. So again, it was cheap setup. I drove that around uh, for a year. I expected the engine to blow up, so, but, <laughs> so then, uh, Eventually, I, I tried starting it and it wouldn't start and I found out the compression was low. Uh, so I tore down the engine and uh, found that the one of the pistons were cracked, one of the ring lines were cracked. I rebuilt the engine, uh, forged Wysco pistons, but uh, stock rods still, uh, new bearings, uh, rebuilt the head. And then I went uh, GT28 from a S15, SR manifold, uh, with the K flanges, 850cc fuel injectors, uh, E85, that's basically where it is now. Uh, dynoed recently at uh, around 315 horsepower, uh, 346 torque. Also went with the wide body kit. Actually the fronts are stock fenders um, with bolt-on fenders and then I molded them onto the stock fender so it kind of looks uh, just like a normal flare. And then the rear are uh, over fenders, 50 millimeters. So obviously fuel ignition and engine management is a huge thing when you are turbocharging an engine that was never set up from the factory for boost, right? So that's obviously a disadvantage, right? Inherently taking a naturally aspirated engine and turbocharging it is a little bit more involved than taking an SR20, which has a Garrett GT28 on it from the factory and then just adding a boost controller and bolt-ons, right? That'll easily get you, you know, 250, 260 wheel horsepower. Plenty for an S chassis. 
But here's the thing, the main advantage is in the displacement. So once you take, like as in this car, you take the GT28 Garrett Turbo from the SR20 and you stick it on the KE24, you've got way more torque. Torque comes on lower, comes on stronger, and this car is actually putting out a lot more torque than it is horsepower, okay? So it really just depends on what kind of power band you're looking for. If you want slightly better top end, SR20 is probably the way you want to go. But if you want a big fat mid-range punch with like virtually no turbo lag, to be completely honest with you, then the KA24 is an extremely effective solution. Until a couple of years ago, I heard a couple of people trying to do KATs for drift cars, and it really caught my interest, piqued my interest. At first, I was like, why, why the heck would you do that? Just get an SR20, the engine that Nissan made for this car specifically, right? And the Pulsar GTIR and a few others, but I mean, honestly, there's, there's not many bad things to say about this car. S15 steering wheel looks super clean on the inside, has a little bit of rub, it rides very stiff, but there's not much compromise here other than that little bit of rubbing. It's got a B&M short shift kit, which is just about as short and as notchy as I would want, frankly, in a vehicle like this. <laughs> Struggling for traction. I mean, honestly, the S14 is the perfect blend of a drift car and just a, a straight up sports car that you can really beat on in the corners, right? Very lightweight, front engine, rear drive, and you can always count on being able to get the rear end to step out, especially with this torquey engine. So it makes it a little bit more involved having this torquey power band versus a little bit more top end with the SR. Yeah, so the whole idea for the turbo kit was uh, if someone unsuspecting would open it, it would look uh, kind of stock in OEM. Uh, so nothing would be flashy or anything because from the outside, the car is already flashy. So I didn't want to attract any more unwanted attention and it, everything just bolts in. The only issue I had was the clearances from the turbo and the engine mount. So I had to make like a little spacer there and then, and the downpipe is, the whole exhaust is custom. It's just a three inch exhaust uh, from the turbo back with the high flow cat and the resonator. So uh, when I first lowered the car, uh, it was still in the open, stock open diff. And every time I would try to go on driveways or anything, and it would three wheel, it would get stuck. So the so I uh, decided to replace it with a VLSD from a J30. It has Tain, Flex Z's, Z32 front brakes. Uh, the wrap is uh, called Avery Gloss Magnetic Burst. Uh, I picked it because it kind of reminded me of like the Midnight Purple from uh, the Skylines. So it was wrapped uh, mostly to promote like my family's shop, which is Art Window Tinting in Anaheim. Great wrap, great wheels. I think the owner is going to 17-inch uh, wheels instead of 18s, which I fully support 100%. He, he, if, if he hadn't said that, I would have probably <laughs> said that uh, and voiced my opinion in that matter. Just, you know, have a little bit more tire, a little bit more sidewall, less, uh, you're less prone for rubbing issues, et cetera, et cetera. Sounds great. It's got a full three inch exhaust, lots of flow. I think these cars look great. Inherently, the 240 just has a little bit of a boy racer kind of vibe about it probably because they're super accessible to get into as kind of a first sports car, you know, you can find a beat up one for not too much money uh, and just kind of work on it from there. You know, stock KA, 24 NA, it's fine, right? It works, you can still slide it and have a lot of fun. But the platform is probably, especially in the Japanese world, kind of like the, the Mustang of the Japanese world, only in terms of the accessibility of aftermarket support and parts and options of what you can do with the car. It's a lot of fun and it's a lot of work too. Even though the S14 has very light steering, I wouldn't say the steering is my favorite part of this car at all. My favorite part of this car is absolutely the power bend. This engine is just 
It's running E85 as well right now, which helps with that turbo spool. That's probably a big reason why it spools up so nicely, but I do wish the steering was a little bit more, a little bit heavier, a little bit more connected to the road. Awesome gauge placement as well. Super subtle, doesn't look too aftermarket or ricey. It's everything you need. There's no, and nothing more, you know? There's no silly triple gauge pod. Um, not saying that all triple gauge pods are silly, just saying if it's not necessary, it's not necessary. That's all I'm saying. Over 400 pound-feet of torque at the crank is like <laughs> kind of freaky for an S chassis car, to be honest. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't noticed, we're not in Canada right now. We're down here in California, Southern California. If you're in the LA area, hit us up. If we're still down here, um, we'd probably be down to shoot a video with your car. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick little drive uh, in this beautiful S14 240SX. I, I know I did. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So check out our other videos that we're shooting down here. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the Roads and Travels podcast on iTunes, Shout Engine, wherever you get your podcasts. And we'll see you guys next time. Oh, 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 oh,